Hello. Might I ask what you're doing? Well, as a matter of fact, I was taking measurements. It's a terrible mess up here, isn't it? Well, actually, I've never been up here before in my life. Might hold five tons super. Do you like views? Views? Well, most people like views. Of course, the higher you go, the less you can avoid a view. How uncannily true. Uh, views loom large in some people's minds. I wonder if they loomed large in yours. Well, By the way, I don't suppose you mind me asking who you are? Oh, my name's Henderson. Oh, my name's Cutter. Pretty Cutter. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Oh. I, I wonder if you mind just holding that. Just stand by the window. Mm. Thank you. I think you move forward a bit. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Mm. Why are you measuring the length of this room? To see how long it is. Who told you to come and do this? Uh, my office. And which is your office, might I inquire? Um, Malford and Keene. Do you work here? No. Well, where do you work? Malford and Keene. All right. Why did Mr. Malpet or Mr. Keene... Oh, Mr. Bishop, actually. ...send you along here? To measure it up. For what? Well, I, I've no idea for what eventually. At the moment, so that we have the dimensions nicely drawn up on paper. Have you some sort of authority you will show me just to put my timid mind at rest? Well, actually, no. <laughs> it was silly of me to forget it, but... Who are Malpet and Keene? Well, architects. We'll make a damn good job of it. Make a damn good job of what? I've no idea. I think I'd better go and have a lie down. Well, presumably, somebody wants to see if they could live in it. Live in it? Who? I've no idea of that either, I'm afraid. No, you wouldn't have, would you? Oh, oh Mr. Henderson, uh, do you think it would be possible to have one of your girls bring me up a cup of coffee? All right, I'll see what I can do. I say, make it a pretty one, will you? And plenty of sugar. Yes, I think we've got someone like it down, down there somewhere. Oh, morning. Morning, Don. Oh, Ken. Do you know a firm called Malpet and Keen? No, never heard of them, why? Yeah, I just wondered. Sorry. Good morning. Oh, Mrs. H. Uh, you'll find a young gentleman named Cutter in the storeroom. Uh, would you take him a cup of coffee, please? And plenty of sugar. I am right in believing that your ultimate aim here is to become secretary to the board. Uh, well, yes. Yes, well, the first step is to um, secure your promotion to principal. Now, I've been doing all I can to push that, but yes. there is one difficulty in your case. It's a um, problem of uh, relationships. This could be quite a stumbling block. I think you know what I mean. Yes. 
But um, apart from that... Oh, apart from that, the matter could be discussed on a much more satisfactory basis. Perhaps you'd like to have lunch for me and tell me how you feel about it. Oh, I'm afraid I'm already lunching with someone. Ah. Oh, well, perhaps tomorrow. Yes, that would be fine. It's, um, it's not Sir John that I'm lunching with. Actually, it's another man altogether who doesn't happen to be married, as it happens. Well, that should be much more workable. Uh, for you, I mean. Miss Lingard? Yes, Sir John? Would you ask Mr. Henderson to pop in and see me for a moment, please? Yes, Sir John. And Mr. Kenneth's on his way in. Ah. Uh, Sir John, can you spare me a moment? Come in. Is there some of this missing? What is it? The Italian specification. I don't know, it's all there. Well, apparently not. According to the overall specification, apart from the main work, we're also putting up the site housing for the workers. Yes? Well, quite, but um, there are no actual specifications for them. No? No. Oh. Was there anything else you wanted to see me about? I take it the specifications are to be drawn up later. Oh, they're being drawn up now. But, John, I just phoned the project's office. They haven't even been asked to draw them up. Uh, no, they're not drawing them up. Hello, come in, Don. But we're putting them up. I contracted to them. Uh, yes, but um, we're not actually designing them or erecting them. No, we have a contract which states explicitly that we're uh, yes, to be responsible for Yes, we shall fulfil it. But that doesn't mean to say we actually have to go around with a hammer and a bag of nails. Oh, you mean you intend subcontracting it? And knock the profit out of it? Well, not necessarily. Well, who's going to do it? An Italian company. Excuse me. Your cigarettes, Mr. Guy. Oh, thank you. Pleasure. Do you mean to say that you went to the extent of getting the contract simply to hand hunks of it over to an Italian company? Yes, well, it uh, must look something like that. Oh, dead right it does. As much as I thought after the shenanigans getting treasury guarantees, they're not likely to smile too cheerfully on that one. Quite. Not to mention the National Export Board. Yes, well, uh, you're quite right there, Kenneth. Mm, I'm glad you see it. Yes, I infinitely prefer it when you don't mention the National Export Board. And who is this company? Bacciardi's. That's what I want to see you about, Don. Senior Bacciardi is arriving here today. I want you to go and meet him. I see. Uh, not as an errand boy, but as a director of the firm. He's a very important man. Fine. I'll take your roles then. All right then. Miss Lingard, have you got the details on Senior Bacciardi? Yes, sir, John. You'll get all the details from Miss Lingard. In the meantime, I suppose, you'll be working out a way of convincing the board and everybody else that this is a reasonable thing to do. In the meantime, Kenneth, if I were you, I shouldn't bury my head about it. No, I'll try not to. You know, one day, the Wilder Circus is going to start performing and somebody is going to fall off the tightrope. Yes, and I shall know who's cut the safety net. Mm, don't put ideas in my head. Yes, well, I'm going to go and find out where and when I'm wanted. I always collect a few engine numbers while I'm waiting. Oh, John. By the way, do you know anything about a firm called Malpet and Keene? No? Why? No, I just wondered. <clears throat> I can hardly believe, Caswell, that um, you've asked me along here just to talk about the civil service. Oh, not entirely, Charles. I thought it was about time that we had a little drink together. I see. <clears throat> Why do you want to talk about the civil service? <laughs> Charles. Tell me, how difficult would you say it was for a woman to be promoted from the executive to the administrative side? Well, everything's more difficult for women, isn't it? The ghost of John Knox still haunts the corridors of power. Would you say that the um, selection board, for instance, was loaded against women? Not necessarily. May I ask why you're taking such an interest in this lady's future, or is that a personal question? Oh, you know me better than that, Charles. Well, I hope I do. I wouldn't be at all interested in allowing the service to further any private machinations. Could we perhaps be... A little more direct about it. Well, the NEB will be requiring a, a deputy secretary. And um, uh, I think that um, it would be um, more suitable uh, to have a woman in the job. Ah, I see. What is she now? An HEO. And she'd require promotion to principal. Is she good? Oh, very. Hmm. Yes, well, she, she'd have to have someone in fairly high authority to, as it were, underwrite her. How high? Well, pretty high. <laughs> as high as you, perhaps? <laughs> Not necessarily as high as that, Caswell. Besides, I don't even know the lady. Do I? 
Have another drink. Stuart. I can't understand you. Not that that should come as any great surprise to me. I seem quite unable to understand anybody this morning. Why? Why what? Why that you can't understand anybody? Of all people, why should you be pushing Susan Weldon's interest? Well, because I think she'll do the job admirably. No doubt, and give John Wilder an even more direct pipeline into the inner reaches. I doubt very much whether she'll jeopardize... whether she'll jeopardize the plum she's been reaching for for so long by doing anything quite so obvious. Very shrewd. I thought so. It'll also kill two birds with one stone. I don't know who the new secretary will be, but I do remember Sefton Kemp and the power he got for himself. I want someone around I can trust. Well, can you trust her? Yes. Yes, I... I think I can now. I hear there's another man in her life. So, now that I've clarified that to you, is... Is there anything else you don't understand? Well, I've been trying to trace an Italian civil engineering firm, and I, I can't get any information on them at all. What's their name? Bacciardi's. Bacciardi's? No, oh, I've never heard of them. I can't really believe, John, that you asked me along here just to talk about the civil service. Well, I've only a small area of it. Who would you like to see as new secretary of the National Export Board? What a very outright question. Well, I thought you might have some feelings about the matter. True, true. Probably one of about three people. Who would you? One of about one person, I suppose. You'd probably suppose wrong. Hmm. Would I indeed? I think it should be kept as neutral ground. Name me a name that you'd like to see put forward. With my arm badly twisted, I'd probably utter the initials Hugh Never. Hello, John. Nice uh, to see you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. I have the faintest idea. I can never remember his name. You were saying, you know. Yes, he's very sound. Yes, I've met him. Is he after the job? Well, he's putting out feelers. Uh, how much use would you be? My dear chap, for all the weight I'd carry in the matter, if a common house fly landed on the opposite scales, it would turn them against us. Ah. What about Charles Granger? Ah, now there's a very heavy man indeed. Very heavy. Well, uh... We should have to keep his weight up, won't we? We must take him out and give him some nice, stodgy food. John, not here. No, he's out. Have you been to collect Patriot yet? No, I'm just leaving. Good. I'll come with you. You after a few engine numbers as well, or mugging up on Italian civil engineering? Civil engineering? Patriot isn't a civil engineer. He's a bloody fish merchant. He delivers frozen fish. Yes? Mr. Bly is here, Sir John. All right, send him in. Hello. I thought you might be trotting along. Your son's been to see you, has he? In this building, the phrase, as far as I'm concerned, is not send him in. It's ask him in. Is it? In my office, if somebody comes blundering in at their pleasure, expecting to disturb me, the decision I make is whether they shall be sent in or sent out. Now, John, what are you up to now? Apparently giving you a lesson in elementary linguistics. You know what I mean. What awful intelligence has Kenneth borne unto you this time? You realize I can't stop you, don't you? And how can you do that? By hauling you up in front of the NEB. You're handing over contracts backed by treasury guarantees to a foreign company. And you know very well that though you've got the power to haul me up in front of the NEB, I have the right, as has already been shown, to say, Damn all. As member of the board, you wouldn't dare. Ah. Oh. So what have you been up to now, Caswell? Working on the answer. Before long, people will not only be asked to appear before the board, but they'll have to speak or face penalties. I see. Good. Still has got to be approved. Oh, yes. So oh, it'll go on. It's going to the top of the list. So, John? What are you up to? 
none of your business. John, I will haul you up. And involve the company, perhaps, in spending money on a fine and knocking the profit out of it. All right, Caswell, haul me up. I'll speak openly and frankly about the whole matter. <laughs> Not the firm, John. You. How do you think you'll feel when I bring you up in front of the NEB? How do you think you'll feel when I spread it around that you've been here today? I don't know why you are here, Caswell. I didn't invite you for coffee, for a drink, or for a chat. I suppose you're just poking your long nose in as usual, hmm? You just arrived. And from some of the things you've said, I can only judge that you are tending to influence a commercial firm for profit. Oh, don't be ridiculous. And remember, Caswell, you know damn well that when you became chairman of the National Export Board, you're required by law to have no further interest in business. There are penalties for disregarding that, too. John, let's at least discuss this project. None of your business. You're sailing close to the wind, John. Well, you'll just have to trust me then, won't you? Hey, look, look, what's that? Um, well, the, the house of the pulp. Ah, that's a big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, big Ben? <laughs> look at that, big Ben. Now, what is the Ben? It is a bell of the tower. Um, I tell you, it is the bell. I read about it. <laughs> you know, my wife, she tells me, she says, Lucino, you're going to London, you've never been there before. What kind of fool you going to look, asking what's this, what's that, all the time. You read a book. So I buy a book. <laughs> and the bell is the bell. And the tower is, is the tower. <laughs> yes, right, you got it. It's only the tourists, they always think that the tower is the bell. Yes, it's surprising how New many Scotland people do think. Yard. New Scotland Yard with all the detectives. <laughs> it's only that the butler always done it, no? <laughs> How they are going to keep in business when they know that all they've got to do is to arrest the butler? <laughs> One man could do the job, no? <laughs> arrest every butler. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm joking. I've got a great respect for Scotland Yard detectives. They're very good detectives. Famous all over the world. Man doing a very good job. What is this? Uh, the senator. Ah. Uh, we've got something like that, too. Who hasn't? We'll be passing Nelson's column in a minute. Up here? Now, you show me. Point it out to me. When we go to him, you show me. Don't let me miss him. Oh, what is this? Yeah, the horse guard. What? The horse guard! Ah! Oh. Extra pass by law and penalty. As I'd heard, I wondered if there was anything in it. Yes, somebody's already working out the details. Now, I wonder who that can be. I'll bet it'll narrow down to three or four names who are usually open to suggestions. I must say, of course, I'm not really surprised. Well, I told you he'd call for the Auburn Scepter. He's out, of course, to make the board work. He obviously didn't believe the horse was dead. And faith can move mountains. Witness, as an ominous example, Lazarus. As though we can't hang around while Caswell goes about turning water into wine. Perhaps it's about time you had a few little chats with your business friends. I'm having lunch with my wife today. Perhaps you'll care to join us. I'm afraid I'm already bespoken. I thought you might have been having lunch with Charles Granger. Well, Charles is actually Pamela's friend. They've known each other for years. I thought she might have lunch with him on our behalf. I thought perhaps tomorrow. Fine. How about lunch now? Good. You uh, are with me on this, John, aren't you? Yes, of course I am. Why? I just wondered. I heard a very funny thing today. Apparently, Caswell Bly is going around pushing the interests of a friend of yours. I can only assume it's in order to have someone keeping an eye on the new secretary when he's appointed. Friend of mine. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> he's good, huh? <laughs> he's very good, no? He's very good. <laughs> Signor Bacciardi. Oh, no, 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 no. Per favore. Lucchino, that's my name. Lucchino. Lucchino. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um... I I'd like to How ask you... How about a glass of something? Would you like a glass of something? Oh, no, please don't oh, bother. Uh, service, uh, quattro, numero four. Ah, yes, have you got a couple of bottles of spumante down there? Yes, I said me two. Room 302. Thank you. Won't be a minute. Uh, Lucchino, you, you do realize that we are directors of Bly's. 
Sir? And, and as such, you can discuss the matter of your erecting the accommodation buildings quite freely with us. Certainly, I do. Certainly. Oh, good, because there's one question now, um, which I know no, about very... What, what is it up there? Oh, that's the uh, GPO tower. That's new. Hmm. Oh, yes, it's only recently. I, I, I thought you said you'd never been to London before. Can you go up it? Yes. Then we shall go up it. Come in. Uh, Signor Baggio. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Oh. Lucino. <laughs> Excuse me. I put it down there. Somebody's obviously told somebody not to say anything. Yes. Thanks. Okay, we have a glass of something. Huh? Lucino, um, is it true that you deliver fish? Now, here is a glass for you. Thank you. And uh, a glass for you. No, thank you. And a glass for me too, no? <laughs> <laughs> is it true? Yeah. Your good health. Yes, of course it's true. Peas, meat, fish, if you can freeze it, I deliver it. So could you perhaps Excuse explain? Excuse me. Um, a friend of mine told me in Italy, Lucino, you're going to London, you should try some traditional English food, uh, roast the beef and chips, is that true? Yeah, well, no, it's not true. Uh, Quite. <laughs> I thought it was a joke. He said, you just go to Claridge's and ask for it. <laughs> Maybe we go, no? And ask for it. <laughs> Joke on him. <laughs> May I just bring us back? Oh, excuse no. me, yes. Uh, you were asking me something. Well, yes. How, if you're a fish merchant, are you going to fulfill a contract to erect houses? <laughs> yeah, it's difficult, huh? I tell you, there is a piece of future here. Your Sir John Wilder can see the future. Maybe he's got a second sight, no? <laughs> A merchant with frozen food can build the houses. Ooh, it's difficult, but very interesting. Now, we shall have a second glass, and then uh, we shall go up the tower. Hello, John. Hello. Hi, uh... No, you were calling around tonight. Well, I'm not really. I just popped in for a drink on the way home. Uh, a social call. How oh, unlike you. What sort of drink would you like? Well, I've got one already, thank you. I thought you'd be back by now. I uh, didn't mean to be sitting here without letting you know and perhaps embarrassing you. Didn't you? How is everything? Fine. How's David Maine? Well? Good. Is it true that you're thinking of leaving the NEB? Why on earth did you hear that? Oh, somebody said that they'd heard it. Possibly something to do with David Maine being at the Treasury. They thought you might be moving there. Well, it's news to me. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I shouldn't have thought there was much more scope for you at the NEB. You can't go much higher there, can you? Well, it is perhaps a bit limiting. Do you know if Caswell's got anybody for the new secretary yet? No. Has he got anybody in mind? I really don't know. He probably has. I wouldn't know. I thought you might have heard. Ugh. It's very expensive. Yeah. He, uh, wouldn't necessarily tell me, of course. No, oh, no, I don't suppose he would. I don't think I'd like you to go to the Treasury, Susan. I mean, we've known each other a long time. I got used to you being at the NEB. What I mean is that I would hate to think of you going to the Treasury just because of this main chap. Well, I'm not, John. Truly. I should miss you. How nice of you. Mm. Well, don't worry, John. Looks as though I shan't be leaving the NEB for quite some time now. Oh? I heard today that uh, there's a very strong chance of my being promoted to principal. Is there? Mm. Well, that should get you quite a long way, shouldn't it? 
I find it quite staggering. The number of people in London who have recently found in themselves a quickening interest in the processes of the civil service. Oh, name here, for instance. For instance, Caswell Bly, doing not entirely disinterested research. On the same subject? One very close to it. Now, are you lobbying on behalf of candidates to the secretaryship? I must say, I didn't expect to find you entering the tour. <laughs> no, I bet it I. So, John's wearing his mastermind gear again, is he? I'm really only a runner with a message on a cleft palate. And Hugh Neller was John's idea. Well, it's not really my idea of almost anything. Do you know who Caswell Bly has been pushing forward for the next most important job after secretary? No. Who? Prepare yourself. Susan Weldon. Nonsense. I assure you. Why? Why indeed. <laughs> so, while John has been manoeuvring in one direction, Miss Weldon has allied herself with Caswell. <laughs> Could there have been a split in the camp? Oh, I thought you might like to hear it. Yes, I'd like to hear it, but of course I don't believe it. As usual, it's likely to be something much more sinister and nothing in it for me. Well, if Hugh Nello is your man, I would think it best if he made the running. He is not my man. Now, I've got a much better idea, somebody completely different. What about Richard Lancer? Now, he'd make a very good NEB secretary. What do you want? Well, for one reason, he's entirely opposed to the idea of women in the higher ranks of the civil service. Now, that could lead to lead some very interesting reshuffling. <laughs> it would indeed, Gamma. Oh, Charles, would you do that for me? If I have a very small pudding. You're going for the more mature and distinguished type of man now, are you? Now, don't be silly and jealous. He's an old friend and it was business. And what business are you in? Cutting up bones for the animals to eat. Where do you want to go this afternoon? Oh, heavens, let's go somewhere civilized. Let's go to the zoo. Eric, drive towards Manchester Square, will you? might be able to fit you in between this week's episode of Desperate Dan and finding out if the milkman's left enough milk for coffee. Hello, Mr. Henderson. Oh, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Do you know that chap? His name's Cutter. Don't you know him either? No. Well, I wonder who does. Has John talked to you at all about this Bacciardi business? No. Has he you? No, he hasn't. So I've been doing a bit of checking up on Bacciardi. I must say he's not quite what he appears to be. He's a millionaire. He owns three factories, two producing frozen foods and one producing plastics. He also has a fleet of 1,500 lorries. Oh, I see, a sort of Italian... Well, yes. <laughs> you see, you and I are in a very awkward position, Don. As the prima ballerina has said to a partner. No, seriously. Sorry, I'm sure. Nobody knows what it's all about. Well, I've no doubt he'll tell us, all in his own good time. On the one hand, it may be a completely harebrained scheme. Which is dubious. Well, yes, yes. And on the other hand, it may be good for the company. Oh, now, stop all this flummoxing about, Kenneth. I know all the on the one hand and on the other. No, no, what exactly is your problem? Well, my father's already started moves to make whatever it is extremely difficult for John, if not impossible. Oh, he would, wouldn't he? He knows even less than any of us. Mm. You know, there are times, Kenneth, when as a captain of industry, your father will make a good poodle clipper. If it's a good scheme, it means we've got to be on John's side against Father. But if it's not, it means we have to arrange ourselves with Father. God. Yes. We've got to do it quickly before any apple cars get upset. And upon which we happen to be sitting, munching. How the devil are we going to approach it? Now, we've got to find out, and he's obviously not going to tell us. And Bacciardi won't if John says not. No, I shouldn't think so. Oh, we have to use cunning. Meet him at his own game. How can we do it? Yes? Don, is uh, Kenneth there with you? 
Yes, John, he is. Good. Perhaps you'd both like to come along to my office in a minute. And I'll tell you what all this Bacciardi business is about. That is, if you're interested. Right. <coughs> Let's go and see whose side we're on. Sit down. Mm. Let me know when you're sitting comfortably, and I'll begin. What do we have to do? Guess which is Bill and which is Ben? Yes, I always hate it when you're cheerful. Well, I suppose we'd better start with the questions. I suppose there are some. Well, I think one will just about cover it. Why are you handing over a building contract to a fish merchant? He's not a fish merchant. At least not in your rather unimaginative sense. Bacciardi delivers frozen food, fish, chips, anything else, in a vast fleet of lorries over thousands of miles. He delivers them in containers which require no refrigeration because the wagons are insulated with the material he produces in his own factory, which can, without any difficulty, be moulded to fit the shape of any wagon or any product. Very interesting. Hmm. And to any size. Now, does it not occur to you that if it can be made to keep the cold in, it can also be made to keep the cold out? Ah, ah. precisely. And if they can be so easily made to fit any shape or size, it would be easy to make them to the size of, shall we say, a house made in a factory, delivered on a lorry. But isn't this stuff very light? You can clad it, you can make it rigid, you can bolt it down. He's gone into it very carefully. Well, I suppose... It's not an isolated idea, Kenneth. And I'm going into it because we want temporary structures. When we finish with them, we can take out what we want, and then we can clear the site with a flamethrower. Not a bad idea, hmm? No, it isn't. I think it's a very good idea. Does it work? Yes. It works as far as we want it to work. Backyard immediately, sometime, wants to make permanent structures. But that's his problem. There's one difficulty. Not that I can see. You only have to stop thinking of a house as a conventional house. This will be a plastic house, and it'll have a plastic shape. It doesn't have to please anybody aesthetically, because it's completely utilitarian. Now, the difficulty I foresee is that my father is at this moment trying to find ways to stop you. You do surprise me. Well, he may have one very strong weapon. You have, in fact, passed a contract over to a foreign country. And do you think he'll stop me for doing that? Do you think they'll do that for the sake of the country? Well, obviously, he does have some... What will be the first that? reason to come into your father's head? The first reason that'll come into your father's head will be afraid that he'll lose the profit for Bly. Possibly, and I might agree with him on that. And you, Don? Yes, I think I probably do. And so do I. You don't honestly think, do you, that I go around getting contracts to hand them over altruistically to any new idea? It doesn't sound like you, I must say. No. Bacciardi has tried to interest a lot of people in his country in this idea, but so far nobody will jump at it. Naturally enough, they want to know if it works. Naturally enough, Bacciardi has to find some means of showing that it will work. We want temporary structures. Bacciardi wants to put them up for us. For which he'll divide the contract. And by which we'll make a somewhat larger profit than if we erected them ourselves. Well, maybe you should have mentioned this before. It was not possible until I got Bacciardi to agree terms this morning. With a get-out clause, in case something goes wrong. Provided that the company agrees the whole scheme. Now, Kenneth, go and tell your father, unless he stops snivelling around the other directors and threatening to haul me in front of the NEB, he's going to cut Bly's profit by one-sixth. Then we'll see where his patriotism lies. Now, let's discuss this matter rationally. Hmm? No, Ken. 
From the little I've heard about it, I still think it's a harebrained idea. No, it's completely feasible. On top of Has which, it ever been done on before? On top of which, Bacciardi is carrying the risk, and we are carrying the profit. Now, what happens if the whole thing fails? What sort of laughing stock are we going to look? It's just the sort of thing that people never forget. Oh, yes, Bly's. The firm that put up all those plastic houses that blew away in the first stiff breeze. <laughs> but you haven't even seen the specifications. No, I haven't. Or I'm not going to agree. But you're in no position to agree or disagree, Father. You seem to forget completely just how you're placed. You can't go on as if you're still running, Blythe. You've agreed there not to. There are other ways of killing a cat. Oh, Father, your arrogance appalls me. It always has. But when you've given a solemn undertaking to the government... Oh, grow up, Ken. I've grown up enough to know you've got to be stopped doing this. You see, you only ever think about your image. You never ask, is it, is it, is it a workable idea? Can it be made to suit our requirements? Only, has it been done before? Nasty new idea, how's Bly is going to look? Which means how are you going to look? Well, Bly's is not you anymore. Listen, Sonny. Don't call me that. Don't be absurd. It's patronizing. And you've got a legal obligation to stop thinking of yourself as a great Bly father figure, whether you know it or not. Look, Wilder wants watching. I really, I really don't know, Father, how I'm going to get it through to you that you are no longer in any position to watch over any of us. No? Then why did you come here to see me this afternoon? You need me to test your ideas. And I'm keeping my eye on you. Caswell's going to try and stop you. Is he? So he says. Who says he says so? Kenneth. Kenny thinks that it's not just he thinks it's a bad idea, but that he's suffering from withdrawal symptoms at being cut off from Bly's. Quite probably. Can he hold you up in front of the NEB? Oh, yes. Even if he doesn't, he's done enough already to set the whole scheme back a month or so. So what are you going to do? Miss Lingard? Yes, Sir John? Would you get me Mr. Caswell Bly on the phone, please? Yes, Sir John. Well, when you can't win them over by argument, Try persuasion. Charm, Don. Charm. Right up to here. Do you think you can convince him? I know I can. Yes? Oh, hello, John. I was just thinking about you. Yes, I thought you might have been, Caswell. Listen, I think possibly I was a little hasty in not taking you into my confidence about the Bacciardi matter. You were. Quite. One can take these constitutional restrictions a bit too far sometimes. After all, the firm still bears the name of Blythe. <laughs> well, since the letters are six feet high outside the building, it seems you should have thought of that before. I wondered if you'd care to come over and have a chat with me about it. Is that a disinterested invitation? Of course. All right, but it'll take more than charm to convince me. You know, the thing that I'm concerned about... Uh, yes. Caswell, I don't think we should discuss it over the telephone. My office would be much better, don't you think? I'll be right over. Ah, Mr. Cutter, I brought you a cup of tea. No, we're a bit short on pretty girls. I put in six lumps of sugar. I said it's terribly kind of you. Well, now, how are you getting on? I still think it's a harebrained idea, John. And you'll convince the other directors we shouldn't do it? Yes, it's quite possible that I shall advise them not to go into it. I don't want the firm to make a fool of itself. I'll be honest with you, Caswell. There's very little chance of this firm making a fool of itself. In fact, there's every chance that the firm might make a name for itself out of this. But if you stop it, or hold it up in any way, you might lose the company a sizable profit. Do you want to make Bly's lose a profit? No, of course not. If it's going you to You mean 
that if we can come out of this with money jingling, that you won't hold me up in front of the NEB. Although I admit that it might be your duty to do so. I'm only interested in protecting... Just a minute, Caswell. Let's get this straight. I have to convince you that we'll make a profit, then you won't go to the NEB. No. Perhaps I won't. Well, I'm very grateful for that. I also appreciate at the same time that you're a man of very great experience. So what do you intend to do about this matter? <laughs> oh, I'd better have a look at the specifications. You'll we'll take them with you? Yes. But, um... If I still think they're harebrained, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. I know you will, Caswell, but let me explain something. How shall I put it? If you stick your long nose any further into this, I'll chop it off. <laughs> if I decide against this, John, and you try to go ahead, I'll stop you. No, I don't think you will. There have been a lot of murmurs recently about the amount of time you seem to spend here. People in Whitehall are beginning to ask questions. It only needs a light putting to it. And if I were to quote our conversation here today, you'd go up with the smoke. <laughs> Would I? I'm very sorry about this absurd delay. We needn't have brought you here in such a hurry. Oh, well, so far, no loss. But uh, you think that there can't be any doubt? Uh, don't worry. We're going to do it. Well, I hope so. It means a lot to me. Uh, not so much to man. But as I say, I think we have a piece of future here. And I'd like to think that I'm going to do something for it. So would I. Oh, well, time to go. At least you're not like the others. Very clever, very good idea. Let somebody try first, then be interested. <laughs> you know, future needs the room to swing its cats in. They'll come to that in time. Well, let me know. Of course I will. Arrivederci, Lucchino. Goodbye, John. <laughs> well, come and see me in Italy. I shall take you to the Leaning Tower. Huh? <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. The future needs room to swing its caps in. That ought to be inscribed over the entrance to Whitehall. Mr. Henderson, I've been trying to get you all morning. Mr. Johnson's been on the phone for you and he says it's absolutely imperative that he sees you at once. I've got the file here if you'd like to go over there now. Mm, will do. What's all that about? Oh, uh, the trade development. What's Caswell's car doing here? Did anybody invite him? I uh, think perhaps I'd better show you something, John. If you want to extend outside, I thought we could reinforce here so you have the extra terrace room. That's an excellent idea. Oh, come in, John. I'd like you to tell me what you think of these plans. Well, you're always making some sort of plans, Caswell. What is it this time? I've decided to build myself a penthouse here. If anybody asks you any questions as to why I'm here, you can tell them I live here. And John, come and have a look at this big view. Very good. Just like old times having you back here. Bit small though, isn't it? Hardly room enough to swing a cat in, I'd say. But then, of course, I don't suppose you'd want to, would you? Mm. 